Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. The Wisconsin primary elections are taking place on Tuesday, August 12th, and my next guest is a lieutenant with the Milwaukee Police Department. He's been an officer for 20 years. Currently, he is the executive officer to the captain at District 7, and he's a Democratic candidate for Milwaukee County Sheriff, Lieutenant Chris Mays. Good morning, Lieutenant. Good morning, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. And as I stated, you are a Democratic candidate for Milwaukee County Sheriff, and you ran against Sheriff David A. Clark four years ago, and here you are four years later. Uh, obviously, you're not ready to give up on winning this particular election. So why is it so important for you to become Milwaukee County's next sheriff? Well, uh, it, Last time when I ran four years ago, uh, I got in the race very late. Nobody was stepping up to the plate, so I decided to take a leadership role. And in 100 days, we got 47% of the vote. Mm -hmm. uh, so that told me a lot that uh, we were able to get that much support in that short amount of time. I'm running for Milwaukee County Sheriff again because Milwaukee County has gotten less safe over the last four years under the current sheriff's uh, quote-unquote leadership. And uh, we need to go into a different direction. We need somebody who is going to work cooperatively and collaboratively with our urban and suburban partners and, uh, and really have more of a uh, embrace uh, embracing style of leadership than uh, somebody who is so adversarial and uh, engaging a lot of uh, just very nasty political rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And you've stated that when it comes to law enforcement, it's important to address the different needs of different communities. Uh, what are some of the top issues that you feel Milwaukee County is facing when it comes to the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Department? Well, I think that uh, one of the big issues is, is violent crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes down to violent crime and criminals that are carrying uh, guns, there's uh, a very direct correlation to narcotics trafficking and guns and violent crime. And so we need a sheriff's department that's going to take a lead role, act as an umbrella organization in narcotics and gun investigations and gang investigations. And that's currently not being done by the sheriff. Now, he's made claims that there was overlap in the past and he moved some things uh, over to the Haida unit. But he has two deputies assigned to the Haida Task Force, which is a federally funded task force, and uh, they are not doing street level narcotics enforcement. So uh, I've had these conversations with members that are uh, commanders in the Haida Task Force, and they acknowledge that we are missing an entire level of enforcement and intelligence gathering at the street level narcotics enforcement uh, you know, efforts. So we need to start looking at that as a sheriff's department. So that's one of the major issues, and I think that single issue has a, uh, a very big impact on the biggest issue facing Milwaukee, and that's violence. Okay, and you have been quoted as saying that the current sheriff is obsessed with control and grandstanding. Uh, you said he's known to bully his officers, and you also called him fiscally irresponsible. Now, he was here during the first segment, and he said that uh, Milwaukee County Executive Chris Avely actually moved some money around, uh, and his budget was cut, that $4.6 million. So um, he's saying that you haven't particularly done your homework when calling him fiscally irresponsible. Well, he's incorrect. Uh, Basically, he is 4.6 on pace to be 4.6 million dollars over budget, but his budget was cut uh, tremendously this last budget go around, I believe, because the House of Correction was taken away from him. And when it comes down to uh, his fiscal accountability, uh, he received a budget increase every year from, I believe, 2002 to 2010, while he voluntarily reduced the sworn number of deputies in his force by over 50 percent. Mm. So uh, a lot of the staffing problems that he's facing nowadays, uh, which is causing him to use excessive overtime expenditures uh, is at his own hand. And so he needs to look in the mirror instead of engaging in very inf uh, inflammatory uh, rhetoric with County Executive Abley and other stakeholders in this community. Um, that's not fostering good working relationships. It's certainly not fostering a collaborative response to the crime that we're facing here in Milwaukee County. And. Uh, as your next sheriff, I am going to work hard at being fiscally responsible. I'm going to make sure that I'm operating within my budget, and I'm going to be having very constructive relationships with not only County Executive Abley, but Chief Flynn, with uh, Mayor Barrett, with the County Board, the Common Council of Milwaukee, and our, all of our suburban uh, counterparts as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that is the way we need to manage uh, our resources here in Milwaukee County. Um, to be uh, as confrontational as Sheriff Clark is, is not helping anybody, and the person that it's hurting the most is the citizens of Milwaukee County. Okay. 
Well, on the flip side, uh, there's a lot of different things uh, that were said during the first segment. One of those things uh, was the fact that uh, you were a police lieutenant four years ago and four years later you're still a police lieutenant, insinuating that uh, you haven't worked or someone didn't see you uh, as worthy of being promoted uh, within a four-year period. I have to have you uh, respond to that uh, because those who support you, I'm sure, don't quite feel that that's the reason why you're still a lieutenant. Go ahead. Well, absolutely. Uh, first of all, uh, once again, David Clark is talking about something he knows little about. Uh, when it comes down to my path within the Milwaukee Police Department, uh, I am still a lieutenant of police, but I am now the executive officer at District Number 7, so I do have a greater level of responsibility. But uh, I have chosen not to put my name in the hat for captain in the past because I didn't think it was fair to the citizens of Milwaukee and to the Milwaukee Police Department because I am committed to being the next sheriff of Milwaukee County. And I I feel that as the sheriff of Milwaukee County, I can have a greater span of influence and have a greater impact on our community. So the fact that he just assumes that because I haven't been promoted over the last four years is because I haven't been found worthy or having good leadership is completely uh, inaccurate. And uh, it's those types of assumptions that David Clark's make that he makes that makes him a very dangerous individual. Wow. Uh, so many people may not know, but your wife is also a Milwaukee police officer. So No, actually, she works for the city of West Dallas Police Department. Okay, so yeah. she's West Dallas, but you're both police officers, so That's I find right. that very interesting. So when it comes to violence in particular, uh, the level that we're seeing in Milwaukee, you did speak on violent crime, but uh, when we look at uh, specific neighborhoods that are dealing with gun violence on a daily basis, uh, what are your thoughts on on being able to work with the sheriff and with the uh, mayor as well as the police chief on dealing with some of these things if you are elected as the sheriff of Milwaukee County. Well, some of the thoughts that I have is that uh, the sheriff's department under my leadership is going to step up to the plate and actually fulfill their core duties. Okay. Uh, the current sheriff has abandoned several of his core duties. Uh, he got rid of the gun unit and the drug unit, and he, he cited reasons for that, but they're unacceptable. As a leader in this community, you need to find ways to get the job done, not make excuses for why you can't. And uh, so the sheriff's department will fulfill their core duties. One of those uh, duties is to be patrolling our parks. Now, he has a small occupying force down at the lakefront, but he has abandoned the parks uh, across Milwaukee County. And we need a sheriff who is going to take his responsibilities uh, very, very seriously. And once we have a sheriff and a sheriff's department that does fulfill their core duties, that will free up those resources from the Milwaukee Police Department, but also our suburban partners, so that they can be in their neighborhoods addressing the problems that they're facing and fulfilling their core duties. So uh, there's a lot to be done, there's a lot that can be done, and I'm convinced that because of the good working relationships that I have with uh, elected officials and stakeholders across this county that I'll be able to uh, really advocate for the Sheriff's Department and improve the quality of life here in the uh, not only the city of Milwaukee but the county. Okay, quickly I want to ask you, uh, when it comes to highway safety, uh, we do uh, see a lot of scenarios of repeat offenders and repeat drunk driving offenders, I should clarify. and. Uh, I'm wondering if you think there needs to be any type of legislation to kind of toughen up the laws when it comes to repeat offenders. Absolutely. Uh, when it comes down to drunk driving laws, uh, the, the Tavern League is a very, very uh, powerful uh, league and they uh, have been able to lobby successfully for a long time, but we need to put public safety first and foremost and we need to have very strong uh, enforcement uh, efforts being made in that area and the current sheriff uh, actually used to run the OWI task force but it was taken from him. He no longer runs the OWI task force that's operating in and around Milwaukee County and I find that you know that's interesting and that to me just shows that other people don't have the confidence in his ability to lead that unit as well as others. Okay and finally tell our viewers at home why they should vote for Chris Mays on Tuesday August 12th.
Well, I'm uh, I'm a veteran law enforcement officer. I've been in law enforcement for over 20 years. But uh, even prior to being in law enforcement, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, I discerned a vocation to priesthood for two years before mm -hmm. following law enforcement as my calling. And uh, and I, I mention that because it, I believe it shows that I have a very strong commitment to public service, whether it be through the priesthood or through law enforcement. Uh, I have a successful track record as a member of law enforcement. Uh, 2012, 2013, my units came in under budget while we had some of the highest clearance rates in the city. Uh, I have a, a very long track record of being effective on crime and uh, while I have been fiscally accountable and effective on crime, I get those things done because I work well with other people and it's that uh, embracing leadership style that I have that I think is going to serve Milwaukee County uh, well and certainly it's going to serve Milwaukee County much better than the current sheriff. So uh, Milwaukee County this past year was named the 10th most violent city in America per capita by Forbes magazine and that happened on David Clark's watch. And so uh, David Clark wants to, uh, to make personal attacks and try to uh, uh, say I'm not qualified, but clearly I am, clearly he's scared, and clearly we need a new sheriff because being on that list should be unacceptable to everybody in Milwaukee County, just as it is unacceptable to me. Well, I thank you for coming by. I think it's really important that you have the opportunity to um, uh, talk about the things that you would like to do if, in fact, you are elected as the new Milwaukee County Sheriff. I wish you the best of luck as well. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to, to you know, feel out my thoughts on these issues. It's my pleasure. Lieutenant Chris Mays is again a Democratic candidate for Milwaukee County Sheriff. He is challenging Sheriff David A. Clark on Tuesday, August 12th. You can log on to Milwaukee.gov or call 414-286-3491 for more information on the upcoming primary election and the general election, of course, is coming up in November. That is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching and I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues. Milwaukee. Have a great day.